Okay, great. Hello, this is R4DS. This is our package uh, book club, and we are going to explain this course, designing your test suite, charter 14. The objective of this charter is understanding the purpose of, of, of tests, the key consideration when you are writing a test, practical ways to use a cough R package, high level principle for effective te 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 testing, addressing limitation of test that, and optimizing our test so, setup. What to test? Whatever you are you are attempted to type something into a print statement or a debugger expression, write as a test instead. Of course, yeah, that's a really good point to start, but you know, from the point that you start in your screen you know, and you create a reproducible example that you can write a test, uh, it's a, you need a little bit of work, but that's a great starting point. Uh, tests are good. They made your code less likely to change inadvertently, but they are also bad. They can make it harder to change your code on purpose. So if you the most you test, the most harder is to change something in your package. Uh, focus your testing in the external interface of your functions uh, to make it easier to date your functions. If you are testing mean points between your function, then you will need, and then you want to edit or update your function, you will need to change all those tests. Instead, you should just focus in testing outcomes. A street to one test to each behavior. If you create many tests to check the same thing, then you will need to also uh, replace those tests. So you just need one, one by behavior. Evolve testing simple code that you are confident will work. Instead, write, a, write always a test when you discover a bug. Somebody or, you, or yourself, you find a bug, you need to write a test to validate that this bug don't come again. How we can derail our writing test efforts? One way is to use the cover package uh, to determine which lines of our package so-called are no executed when you test, when your test suite is from. The goal is to reach 100%, but take consideration that going from 90 or 99% coverage to 100% is not always the best use of your development time and energy. You better focus your testing energy on code that is tricky. They have their dev tools, have their own interface to, to up to apply those 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 reports. So you can use DevTools test coverage at the file for, for checking an individual file, or you can use test coverage to explain the whole package. Also, we use this, you can create a workflow uh, that checks every call before merging. That's really useful because if somebody wants to to add more functionalities, that also ensures that they are testing the code that they are adding to the package. High level principle of testing. Uh, the test should ideally be self sufficient and self contained. Test code should be obvious rather than drive. So it doesn't matter. You need to repeat yourself sometimes. Uh, testing your code is not about uh, code efficiencies. Uh, it's a little bit different in that aspect. Uh, the interactive workflow shouldn't leak into on the line 
on the terminal in the test suite. It's like your test shouldn't depend on code that you run manually on your console. A writing good tests for a good code base often feels more challenging than writing the code in first in, in first place. Sometimes writing the test with all these principles is hard. So you sometimes need time to, to develop a, a, a robot test for your function, sometimes even for a good function. They explain that sometimes, oh, I may be writing a bad function because it's hard to test. But no, don't worry. Uh, they explain that testing a function is also an ability that we need to develop uh, by with the time. Uh, I don't know if you have any comment or questions so far. Okay, right, let's continue. Let's talk about self-sufficient tests. They recommend to eliminate any code outside of the test that function. If your code is at that level, that means so before the test that function, objects and function define where we have a test file a, a scope. But if you have more code between test that functions, uh, the object and function defines there we have a partial file scope. And we have a really good example. This is the example they have in the book. For example, you are, this is top uh, level code because it's before the test that function. So you are defining a data frame and also you say uh, skip these steps yeah, today is no month, it's not Monday, for example. And you apply the test. Then you define a second data frame. And also, hey, if you are checking this in a window, you don't need to check this other one. Uh, you know, I saw it, it to me it was like, hey, really good because yeah, I'm defining this data frame and I also want to use it real. So I don't need to repeat it, but that's not the point. They recommend that you do it in this way. So yeah, you need you would need to repeat a skip is a Monday twice. And here you will need a, it's on Windows and define the the that for a data frame twice. So for that, this is a self-contained a uh, test because all that you need to understand that is happening for this test you have it right here all that you need to, to know about this this snapshot is just about that that's the the best situation um, and that's make easier to understand one of the point is when you are writing a test you really want to know uh, you you want to make it easier to yourself to read it when you you are debugging because the point is one uh, the test would be read it more times than you would write it. If it, it of course this it seems simple because it's just few lines, but if you if if the data frame was created maybe two hundred lines before. You it's gonna be hard. You will need to use the the find function of R Studio maybe to find out what did you define that that, or maybe that that change you know in another line in the one hundred and then you you are in the three hundred maybe you know things like that. Mm -hmm. So you you avoid those problems by having self contained. A self contained test. Each test that has the own execution environment, and they explain that that was for our objects. Uh, an object that you create inside a test does not exist after the test uh, exits. So, for example, you will have theme variable that is not present in the global environment, and then you create them inside of the test. You are really confident that you won't find that variable outside of that test. 
but test that has some limitations. If, for example, your test edit the system file by creating or deleting files or changing the working directory, you know, that will, that change will keep after the test. If you uh, write a library code, that will remind after the test. Or you attach a data frame, that will remind after the test. Or maybe you edit some global options, or you edit the part function you are using the base, the the base R package for graphics, or you create a new system environment, for example, uh, that we use for API calls, maybe to to set the keys. All that, all these kind of changes will remain after the test. And they have a really good example. For example, they say, oh. Yes, on live library is loaded. No, it's not loaded. Do we have this option? No, we don't have it. Do we have this uh, em variable system environment? Uh, variable system environment variable. No, we don't have it. And they start calling the library, you know, changing the options to make the test. And after the test, all those changes will remain. And we don't want that. We want to be confident that uh, we are not changing the testing environment from one test to another test. So the solution for that is used with R. This package has no dependencies and you can add it to the suggest and all your description you can use this. So that that they have functions like local package, local options, and local uh, system environment. So you can confidently find that and you know that anything will remind for the next steps on this on your on your test file. They also explain that inside test that they run this function local reproducible that changes the display width and also the number of colors. You have fewer colors inside that. If your test is related to those things, it's, it's good you to know that a test that is applying this function, so you might need if your test may, might be affected with that function, you need to read the documentation to be aware of that. Uh, I don't, I'm not using that. I, I haven't been affected yet because it's not like for data friends, for maybe for graphics. Uh, yeah, that would be important. You are using certain colors maybe. Also, if you are testing correctly, you should be able to start a new R session uh, called DevTools Log On, which log all the defined below R folder, and run the individual test uh, and walk through, through it by, uh, line by line. So that's you know the, the objective that we want. We want to refresh your session and be able to run the test without any problem or reproduce, you know, the fee, the, the error that we saw uh, in the check. Do you have any comments? Not yet. Okay, great. Okay. Let's now to understand a little bit what happens when we call log on related to, to the test environment. Uh, also, you, if you, for example, are repeating, you can create your own functions for testing purpose. You can define inside of the R folder of your project. So you can create maybe test that and you can define all your functions and upload are also low no exported functions, they will be available for your testing. So that's an approach. If you don't have many, 
you know, you don't have many functions, you can do it like that. But also, you can define functions inside uh, the test that folder. So you are in test, then test that, and you define an um, R script with the helper, beginning with helper, then low all also we make those functions available. That's really useful. For example, you have many functions for that specific uh, function. So, okay, this, this function is huge. So we need to maybe create three functions to test that. So let me create with a helper and the number name of the function. So I know that every function that I'm using here, that is not part of my core package, it is here. That's also an alternative to the to the one before. Uh, or you can also, if you don't want to have a internal functions that are just for testing, yeah, you can also create the helper.r and that will work correctly. Test that cell files. Cell files are good for global test setup. This is a thread for test execution in no interrupted or remote environments like turning off a message or writing to the clipboard. This setup doesn't execute when you run log all. Uh, the cell file often obtain the corresponding a tear down code. Basically, if you are writing a test, sometimes you don't need messages because nobody is going to see them, you know. So you can, inside of the set up R script function inside the, the test app, uh, that will run them in the no interactive sessions. So you can avoid those, those situations. Uh, based on uh, on this R script. They have just a simple function. They say, hey, replace script both first and also replace HTML re preview. Yeah, nobody's going to, to see any preview. So you can define your options and, and also differ. It's like uh, with, with R, it's like a do on asset. I know you know that our base are function do on essay on the functions. Like when you complete your test, then you apply this this other one. But that's basically a restoring the original state. So when you write options, it will return the original options rather than the new ones that you are applying. And with this one, you you are restoring that. Also, we are able to store data for our test. So sometimes we have a little bit large data frames. We can save safely inside of the feature folder. You can create a folder for that. And the is inside of test that. And that would be fine. To find the correct path in an interactive or automatic test, you can use test path. So you know that the that the interactive session will change maybe your local directory. So if you want to get the correct path for the non-interactive, interactive use that function, and it will be able to to find that. For example, they use here the a uh, suit folder features. So basically they write features and then they write the name of the the file that they want to open. So yeah that's that's really good because sometimes we want data to to test and not basically a, to share that data with our users. They don't need that data. That's just for testing purposes. Uh, where to write files during testing. You should only write files inside a, a temporal directory. 
So you are create. You you don't expect. You are not allowed maybe to to write your your temporary files in the home directory or any specific folder. So you can use the with our local temp file. It creates a file within a, the session temp directory. Uh, whose deadline is tied to the local environment in this case and the execution environment of the individual test. So yeah, you won't have much control of the name of that file. You will you will receive the path that is saving, but you also can use the local temp deal. So you can create a new folder in the in the temporal directory, and then you will be able to to set your own names to the files that you are saving. So you will have more control of that you are creating more than one, you know, and it's important to you to track the names of the files that you are saving. And that's it. Thank you. Um, I had a question about the data. Um, do you know if there's like any rules or heuristics for creating a data frame to use versus saving it as an RDS file? I think your your if you can define them and it just a few lines, for example, the ones that we showed before, I would prefer to write it. Right that I have it as a binary file. Well, it's a little bit huge, you know, have many, uh, like 10 columns, you know, maybe or more. That would be hard even to read that. So, well, for this case, yeah, I want to see this A, B, C, and one, two, three. There's not, not a huge problem. So it's not like, even though you can save it, it, it's easier to understand that you don't save it. So it's like, when you are running your test, you are thinking like, hey, it would be easier to me to remember that the data is in, you know, a RDS file or just to, to write the data frame function right here. And we have and we know what what we are using. That makes sense. Yeah, I, I would say yeah. So uh in the package that we developed, we have an example where uh, our well, we have a somewhat standard test data that we use in about 50 tests. So we have data raw or instro or whatever script that creates that data thing and it's uh, it's loaded on top of several data files, kind of breaking this convention that everything should be self-contained, but it's, it's just practicality, right? So it takes several minutes to recreate uh, that data thing, thingy, uh, with a Y, uh, or I, whatever, um, and uh, it's just not practical, right? If a test runs for one-tenth of a second and it takes several seconds to create a data frame, um, because it depends on some other part of the package, that was a lot of situation. Part of the package creates a data set and then uh, it is being used on test some other part of the package. Um, then it's just doesn't make sense to recreate the data frame. It's yeah, it's loaded whenever it's convenient within the test file. Um, that's that's kind of performance issue, right? So you want to run your DevTools test and proceed it and have it proceed as quickly as possible uh, for you to debug issues that might, might come. And uh, there's a little bit of a compromise between readability and performance in that case. Um, we are happy with, <laughs> with that decision as well. Uh, Stas Kalenikov in six months' time may disagree with Stas Kalenikov as of February 2024, but I'll talk to that Stas in six months. All right. So you you, you say, uh, Stas, that you, you prefer to create a, a data frame or you're creating a function, you mean? Oh, why, why? I don't understand. You say that okay. it what, takes... What I'm, 
what I'm saying is that in our particular testing situation, we have a sizable data object and okay. it takes us time to produce that. So this single liner runs for what? I don't know, half a millisecond. It's, okay. it's, it's not taxing our performance, but when it, you begin seeing that most of the time of the test is being spent on preparing the uh, data to, to get tested on, then that doesn't make sense. That's where you need to abstract the data and put it into test helpers. Okay, got it. Because the, the, the time to produce this data was, was too much time. And you need to reproduce in every test that environment. Yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, of course. We, we, we want to, to write light test because we need to run it many, many times. Just imagine you have a, a test that takes one minute. You will lose your life. <laughs> like uh, you you won't want to, 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 to run the check function as useful as use as usually as you should. Because you will you won't be able to run any any call but those minutes. I was right. say and also, that. that's also my my experience in developing developing the packages that we've been developing is that uh, basically whenever you commit new code, you should write tests for that. Um, so that's where you have the ideas fresh in your head, um, and well, um, you're writing okay. Well, this data frame now allows to be grouped by. Now you write a test where your input test input data frame is grouped, input data frame is not grouped, and you see that um, it works reasonable in both both cases and produces the expected results. Um, and that should be the same commit message. Um, and yeah, so and I, I, I think that the, the point was made. Another point was made in the previous chapter is that if you find it difficult to write tests for your functions, then it means that those functions are probably too long and try to do too much. And uh, I've definitely had experience like that. I have some functions that are like three or 400 uh, lines long, and I'm not even trying to test that. <laughs> it's, mm. well, it's just, I know it's um, not particularly feasible. Well, that's that's not true. I, I have some snapshots um, for, for those, those functions, but it's only very partial. Um, test right, so there's so much going on that it's. Um, I've, I've tested this. I've tested basically the stability that whatever debugging I'm doing, um, the changes I'm introducing into that uh, function don't break the normal behavior. That's that's a little sad, but that's where I'm just find ourselves. We are we'll, we are planning to refactor, and that's where tests are absolutely indispensable. Well, refactoring means that you're rewriting your functions to work differently uh, while producing identical output, right? So you can say, um, I now want to rewrite my processing using data table rather than um, deploy. Mm -hmm. Right? So you, you, you say, ah, I'm going to speed things up uh, and I want to rewrite this using data table. And that's where you write tests and uh, I'll make sure that you get identical results from from both of them. Sort it the same way, then group the same way, whatever. Um, that's that's your assurance that your code continues working as as it did before. Yeah, that that really uh, when you are refactoring, yeah, that's really a speed the things. Because you you don't need to 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 share side by side. Uh, I have wrong in the experience, you know, that to refactor my code with uh, applying these these tests, automatic tests. Uh, yeah, it's time consuming. You need to go to check the function. To sometimes you're refactoring a boolean expression, and you don't, you are not getting the same results, even though you think, <laughs> even you think that you are doing the same thing, but it's not. The order matters. Well. Well, another thing, well, sometimes you're refactoring because the uh, package you've been relying on is discontinued or some functionality is discontinued, right? So you have 
all of those rename add, rename v that are that are replaced with across, and you kind of like, hey, well, do I stick with that function or do I do I refactor my code that it works with the newer function? That doesn't doesn't do much with efficiency or speed, but it's just whatever your code depends on may not be working, continue working the way you need it to be. Um, so I just wanted to say that I appreciated this chapter in general because I feel like it focused on um, a more sort of intangible like workflow type stuff. And I think that that sort of thing is sometimes quite challenging to figure out. Um, I remember when I first uh, started looking at, when I first looked at the code on GitHub for somebody's R package for the first time, and there were so many files everywhere, and I didn't know like which ones went with which other ones, and I didn't know which ones were there because they had to be versus like, because they were standard files and which ones were there because the person had decided that was their own organization. Um, and so even like the, I think the thing in this chapter that hit me the most was how um, uh, load all will automatically run the helpers for tests. Like I didn't know that. And um, it's not, that's the sort of thing that tends to be kind of tricky to find in documentation. Like I'm sure it's in the documentation somewhere, but usually it's not where you want it to be when you're trying to figure out like, you know, how do I write a helper and how do I put it? Where do I put it? And when you arrive at the functions and the files, um, it's not going to be obvious just looking at the folder that like, oh, these helpers are going to get run in order um, when, when load all is called. So yeah, I don't know. I just think that I'm glad that this chapter was included. I don't remember, is this a new chapter? Has this been here for a while or did they just add it? Um, I think they broke it up into the three testing chapters. Okay, uh, yeah. There, I think there was just one in the previous. Yeah, I think the first time I looked at this book, I was looking at the previous version and the testing chapter was much less complete. And um, I would have really benefited from this sort of higher level, like sort of hidden curriculum of, of development. I think it's really important. So yeah, thanks for presenting it. Yeah. Uh... Uh, that's amazing, you know, it's like most of the high quality code that you will find is in a package and you know how to write a package and you know how to read one and you have more examples that you used to have. So you don't just depend on, um, on or maybe Stack Overflow, you know, uh, questions or you can go, oh, this package does this. How they do? Let me check. <laughs> Well, there's plenty of packages on on CRAN that have zero tests. So if tests <laughs> don't fail, uh, because there are no tests. Uh, that's all the packages uh, written by some academics in base R, and I look at them and it's, well, I see that it runs in the main case, but if I stick this character instead of the integer that this function clearly expects, it's going to break. So, and that's, well, that's why I say, well, yeah, this package is out there, but you can't seriously take it for reliable code unless we put, you know, brackets around how this stuff is being used and we do all of our internal testing of the inputs before it goes into, into those functions. And that's basically means, well, <laughs> rewriting those functions that they work properly. That's, that's, not a very pleasant. So I wanted to uh, add a little bit about test coverage. I, it's, it's well, the cover package does provide some diagnostics, but it's it's always hard, right? So it has no idea how different things are supposed to work with a new function. So, for instance, if you if you have something like if those two options, if this option is false, and that uh, if this input is false, and that input is zero, then um, that the next input, the next parameter is irrelevant. But if this is true and this is zero, then uh, the uh, next input, uh, next uh, argument should be uh, this character, one of those two character strings. But if it's 
the first uh, input is the first parameter is true and the second parameter is greater than zero, then five different strings are allowed in the third argument. That kind of stuff is impossible for Kava to figure out, and that's your responsibility um, as the developer to write the test for. And that's basically, well, the more complex your functions are, the more complex the tests are, because in this case, well, it's kind of combinatorial, right? The number of arguments that you have. So you have this, this, this testing business is just getting more complicated. That goes back to the question of scope of functions and how complex your functions are supposed to be and how testable they are. Um, is, I mean, this is another argument in favor of breaking functions down because that's easier to test. That's yeah, that's a concept. yeah, I know that there is a concept that you should expect that your function do just one thing. The point is sometimes the one thing that you want to see have many, many steps. Um, sometimes you don't, you don't see... Uh, it maybe at a starting point, um, you create the function just what that's one function, but when you start adding arguments, you might think you can break the function. For example, you have many if statements inside your functions that are breaking your code and in many inputs. Uh, that would be an opportunity to 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 write different functions just like that having just a bit one. Right. Well, my, my starting point with most functions is I put the well the list of inputs and the first few things I do I write all sorts of stop if not testing the inputs that this is if this is a data frame I expect the class of that object to be a data frame. So I put the stop of not, I put expect error. And I test that with errors and expect error that this is not a data frame, and uh, um, I I write unit tests for that. That's I mean even for simple functions, that's like I don't know twenty minutes of work just to re write all of those expectations and write the tests for them. Maybe it's gonna be faster with Copilot. I don't know. Um, it is a little faster now that I think about it. So that's a cert cert. A set R? Uh, well, a set R is for for somewhat more complication, complicated um, things with the data. As far as I, well, at least that's my that's my use of that. Um, maybe that's a short that though. Um, yeah, it's. Um, I know that I was checking yeah. the there is also a cert that that is, would be you know the the brother of test that but I was checking that it has been maintained in, in many time so you are thinking about writing many tests uh, or your prior knowledge I would encourage to to use this one instead of a a cert that let me show well, you. This, this, this is assertions on the data. This this is the data mm -hmm. management kind of thing. This this is this is not as much not as much about test, testing the instance. exactly. Yeah, because you were talking that you start, you know, pointing your assumptions that so yeah, that's just well, the, 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 this, the, so this package is, is is testing assumptions on one single data frame. Right, so it's saying, well, this is this is how the names are defined, and this is how the missing data patterns exist, and this is whatever that some this is the set of dummy variables that sum up to one, and blah blah blah. So that's it's that, like, that, it's like, like a stream. That's that's not what you typically have in your packages. This is something that you have in your analysis code. Um, yeah, but that would be the first step in your analysis code is to. Make sure that you have the right data set, and that's the, the stuff that you need further along in your pipeline of data analysis. That this is, this is satisfying. I mean, this yeah. is, this is important, but this is important mm -hmm. for very different reasons than what we're yeah. discussing in the testing challenge. No, but it's like when you write this kind of functions, then you you need to write a test, a unit test to, to verify that you are that. It breaks, you know, it breaks when you, when doesn't 
uh, fit all the, these conditions, any of these conditions. So you you write you start writing a spec error, but you don't define any any expectation. Yeah, you you won't have any spec error in, in your package. Uh, yeah, we, we think we are we are good with for this session. And then, yeah. Yeah, but if you are thinking about I recommend use this because it's my it, it's active maintainer. <laughs> Cool. Uh, thank you, Anel, for presenting. Um, this was a great chapter. Um, I think next week you'll present again and we'll finish up the testing um, section on testing. Um, and then after that, I believe it's uh, a break for daylight savings madness. Uh, then we'll return it after a few weeks. Three weeks, yeah. Yep. So... Uh, yeah, feel free to check out the sign-up sheet if you have a chance and uh, sign up to talk. And then uh, hope to see you all soon. See you then, guys.